Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Spin Rack. I'm here with my boys, PD and Kyle. Say what's up, gents. What's going on? Ready to rock. Hey, we're talking about that hot trailer that just dropped Show Gun. Not Show Nuff, Show Gun. So, hey, wow. Selecta, please play. Is this going to be like the original or is this going to be something different? <laughs> Do not be fooled by our politeness, our vows, our maze of rituals. Death is in our air. And sea and earth. Just remember. We live and we die. We control nothing beyond that. There's a saying out here, every man has three hearts. One in his mouth for the world to know. Another in his chest, just for his friends. And a secret heart, buried deep. Where no one can find it. power in a land like this the one with the open or the one you never see when i die here likely I think, I mean, the production value in this is fantastic. I remember seeing the original 1981, which I absolutely loved. And I mean, I don't know it. I don't know where the center is. The center of the other movie was Black Dawn, a man, a Dutch Protestant who came into um, Japan, a culture totally alien to him. And he had to navigate all the, the different, um, I guess, I guess, uh, waves or winds or whatever that was there against him. And of course, on top of that, you have the Portuguese and their black ship, you know, their, their, the tre that they made treasure from, from the East, the Far East. And he was trying to get something for his own team, his own country, his own self, his, you know, make money. But I mean, he is critical. He's there watching key events that unfold during, the, I believe, the Japanese um, warring state period um, and the rise of one man to become Shogun. Um, very interesting show, the original 1980s. Um, huge hit. Um, the character who played him, um, the actor who played him was like one of the biggest stars, I think Richard Chamberlain at the time. So yeah. here it's just kind of funny. We have another actor and I don't know anything about him. You know, so I, I feel that the focus is definitely going to come off of him. I'm not sure, but it looks beautiful. And it's going to be another uh, TV series on um, Apple. So, I mean, we know Apple's throwing Hulu. Apple. Hulu. Hulu and no, no, this is Disney. This is not Apple. And that oh, worries me. Oh yeah, that's why this that worries me because I'm actually perusing the original series because this came out in 1980, which was definitely before my time. And I'm watching it; it's a great story. First of all, all respect due to Richard Chamberlain. Richard Chamberlain, Mac Daddy. Richard Chamberlain's get all the girls, all of them at the end of the day. Okay, so that's one. But then I'm you know watching it, and the, the original story there is a very poignant love story that's going on 
amidst these uh, amidst the events of the rise of uh, Toronaga to become Shogun. And to be honest, the main character, Blackthorn, he's really just along for the ride. You know, he's just along for the ride. There's not a lot that he can do. He receives some honors and some things happen, but he doesn't really have any significant power in his situation. He's, you know, just trying to do, he's doing a good juggling act and a good balancing act at the end of the day. And uh, Mariko, who he's, who's the, his interpreter, you know, woman who ends up being his interpreter is, you know, ends up falling in love with her and helps him with the culture and such. And that's really the, the meat and potatoes of what's going on for the most part to keep us interested in the story. Because if not, it would just all be the intrigue of watching Toronaga rise, you know, to become Shogun. And there's, there's a lot of manipulation going on that he doesn't necessarily see at first. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff, other stuff going on as well. But this right over here, just looking at the trailer, if you had no, if you have never seen the the nineteen eighty series, you, you'll of course you won't care. If you never read the book, which was a worldwide bestseller, sold yeah. fifteen million copies. Fifteen million copies this book sold. Okay, it was based on the book Shogun. Fifteen million copies of books, you know, sold. If you're not familiar with the book as well, because that line that you hear in the trailer is a very famous line from the book about, you know, do not be deceived by our ways. We, you know, death in the air, death in the sea, in the land. Okay, you can come into this fresh, but I'm already looking at this and I'm like, all right, you know, they've they've got uh, Mariko who was not this type of character. Now she looks like she's Konoiche, like a uh, female ninja, you know, you know, over here swinging on a, a, a Naginata at the end of the day. And then it's always the same thing. The female character can only be strong if she's doing masculine things or what would be considered masculine things she's got to fight you know you know she's got to you know uh, be part of this uh the, the, like the manipulation in the masculine sense or what have you and there's a really strong romance between the two of them the original story which looks like they're going to throw that out for this at the end of the day and somehow she's the focus of the story that's not the original story at all i understand that the, oh, the other thing that i also know she doesn't have any accent when she's speaking english which I would find, I mean, this is like, what, the 1600s? I would find that remarkably hard. I would find that remarkably hard to believe that someone who is Japanese by birth, who's probably learned English in Japan and has no discernible accent whatsoever when speaking English, knowing that probably she would be speaking definitely more, I mean, that was that for me it would just be remarkably hard to believe. And then I'm listening to her Japanese. I have a little bit of familiar, uh, familiarity with it. And I'm trying to discern if her Japanese is accented is at all, because then I could get a better understanding of it. But I can see some of the stuff they're doing. They don't want to have her to have an accent because then they don't want her to come across as, the, you know, like a, you know, China doll, if you will. Uh, they don't want a love story because then, of course, she doesn't have any power or anything of that nature. Even though that's a big part of the, the big part of the story in the original series in the book. Okay, so then if like those are the bigger parts of it, and you're not going to focus on Toronaga, we can see that. We can see that from the trailer. What's the story about her rise to power as Shogun? Because that didn't happen. So those type of things make me concerned for the overall story. But I agree with Mars. The production, the production uh, value, the production quality is that's a ten. Just looking at the armor, I mean, well, the armor is dusty, and the armor should always be shiny because these guys always took good care of their armor in these time periods. I don't know why they always portray it as like used. They would always keep this stuff really polished, really uh, strong because if it wasn't, then it wasn't going to be good to defend you. But you know the uh, the architecture, the armor. You know, even like the quick scenes, even the quick scenes with the uh, with the weapons, even the way the people are seated. OK, even the way that they're seated, because there were different ways of being seated uh, Japan that would actually show hierarchy, depending on how you said even the way that the people are seated. You know, they've paid a lot of attention to those details. I don't know how much <laughs> I don't know how much detail they paid attention to when it comes to the original story. So we'll see. But. I have to, I, I'm going to watch it because I really enjoyed the first series and I would like to enjoy this one as well. 
But unfortunately, Disney has just been real suspect when it comes to telling these type of things. You know, they go overboard when it comes to female characters, trying to make them into something they don't necessarily need to be. But who knows? Maybe they'll get this one right. I'll see. Well, you know, the hard part of it, I think, is the going right to the sort of fighting and the you know that that was a part of the thing, but having it, you only see the female actress kind of doing all the work. So that would be the kind of say leaning towards that. But, you know, as you said, the being able to do these stories and not have to fall back on having the action and having the action characters, you can have the action, but having the drama be the thing, that's what felt like the, you know, it was so long since I seen it, but that felt like it was a drama and then you're going to have some action, but definitely keying on the interpersonal struggle where we're like, no, we're going to have to get past that so we get to the cool stuff. All right, I'm stuck. I'm trapped. How did I get trapped here? I'm going to die here. Like, <laughs> so like that sort of stuff, instead of getting into the, how the two cultures kind of interact and him being there for who knows how long. So hopefully, but yeah, it does look good. And hopefully they're just not doing the stuff to say, well, we need to have... You got to have your action. And if you're going to have action, you're going to have to have your cool female assassins in there, too. So we're not we're not we're not going we're not going crazy here. We do it. We like the book, but come on, we need to have some action. James Clavell, when he wrote this book, which was an international association, of course, we have to do the times. I mean, what this is in the 70s, I think, you know, she's actually based almost all the characters are based or most of the characters are based off historical figures. And mm-hmm. her character actually is a historical figure and someone who's key. You know, she becomes a Christian. Her her family was involved in the murder of one of the, the three unifiers of Japan. She took, pulled it off. <laughs> so he so going. The she's like, fascinating in and of in and of herself, you know. But now um, making her a ninja. I mean, probably, I don't know. Probably really went too far making her the the female concubine of Anjin, the secret, you know. But now they're making her. This is the, the secret ninja assassin samurai. She was, but the best, she was never a concubine. That's the thing. If you if you saw the original story, it's not like he's like he's not this white savior who comes in here and takes over everything. He's very much, very much subject subject to the whims of the people around him. Be it yeah. the samurai, be it uh, be it Torinaga, he's very much at the whims of that. Okay, it's a. It, it's it's a it is a very well told and well placed story for what the situation would be. He lands in Japan, and after that, everything that happens is out of his hands. It's totally out of his power. The only thing that he's able to do is ingratiate himself with Toronaga because he saves his life twice. But even then, that ingratiates him with him. It, it doesn't give him anything else. He doesn't have his ship until it's returned back back to him. At one point, he's so in love with Mariko that he wants to marry her. He has the temerity to approach Toronaga to say, hey, look, maybe we can get this done. And Toronaga's looking at him like, you know, what are you, stupid? Don't ever bring that up again. Okay, don't ever bring that up again at the end of the day. He has no, he has no authority and no power, okay, aside of what is given to him by Toronaga. That's it. So she, the idea she's already could, married. She, she's already married. Remember that, right? She's already she's already married. Uh, her situation. Well, I won't get into her situation, but suffice to say, it's a loveless marriage. So that opens the door for that opens the door for the two of them. But it's not like he comes in there and he's some you know he's some brawler. And the the other thing that they take out of it is that uh, by making her a ninja, you are really saying that women are powerless. That unless they are able to do these physical things, which more than likely they would not be able to do, they don't have any sort of power. And in the story, you see that she has a large amount because she can do something that no one else can do for the most part. She can speak both languages. Which in okay, so in more so history, she, it was she was she studied both that. Yeah, she did. You know, you're yeah, right. So more more so than her being able to, you know, come over here and juke somebody in the back of the head, the fact that she could interpret. Okay, made her invaluable. It makes her, it makes her invaluable to Blackthorn, but that's the only person he can really communicate with strongly. But also to Toronaga and a whole bunch of others. She does a lot of interplay when you look at it. But that type of intrigue, uh, I don't know. They they lost. They really they just over 
they have really, I, I can't even say overcompensate because you never needed it. Nobody was ever begging for it at the end of the day. She's not a dam If you see the original story or the book, she's not a damsel in distress. We don't need that sort of action, you know, coming from her. But we didn't, because that first, I mean, it's it's from 1980, but it's a it's really good. I mean, the only thing that this story would probably have over it are the production values, where they could put more money into the costuming, that sort of you know that sort of stuff. But it was filmed on location in Japan, the original uh, the original it series. It looks it looks excellent. But don't forget that Blackthorn did become a samurai or was added to the samurai class because remember, he gets um, I guess he gets his own the village that he he landed in. I guess he gets control of that. You he, know, get, he, he gets the him. village. He he gets the village first, and then he's told that if he doesn't learn Japanese successfully within six months, they're going to kill everyone in the village and burn it down. <laughs> Gotta love him. <laughs> yeah. So then he goes, and you know he's like really distraught by the whole thing. So he goes back, uh, not to Toronaga, but to uh, one of Toronaga's. Uh, let me. I'll just let me. I'll call him a capo for lack of a better term. But he goes to one of those guys, and he's like, look. You, he understands enough Japanese culture to say, look, I, this is bringing me great shame. This is bringing me great shame. And if you don't undo this, I'm going to commit suicide. And the guy's calling his buff. He says, you're a Christian. You're not going to commit suicide. That's too sinful. You guys don't believe in that. So he takes out the wakizashi, the short blade, puts it to his chest, and then he's, he's, he's totally committed to it. Mm -hmm. He's totally committed to it, that he's going to plunge this in. And one of the samurai there stops him. And when you see the scene, he's fighting with him for the blade. So you can tell that he's not faking this. He's going to do it. <laughs> he's going to do it to get his point across. And it was in that moment that the guy's like, okay, he tells him, I'm not going to rescind the order to burn the village, but whatever Japanese you learn in six months, that will be sufficient. And it's a great scene. It's a great scene at that point because he can only win through strength of commitment. He can't fake his way out of this. When he put, takes that blade and puts it to try to push it through his heart, he's got to be real because the samurai who stops him, these are guys who are ready to die. They'll know if he's faking. And when that samurai goes to stop him, he's like, no, 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 no. We can't afford for this guy to die because Toronaga wants him alive. <laughs> but right now he's getting ready to kill himself. It's really good really good stuff in that original i don't know if they're going to have the same stuff over here because we're going to give it a try we're going to give it a try okay <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I dig so, the original so much that's why i'm willing to give this one a try but you know like, like like i said they have a uh, you know they, they got some issues they got issues and just to throw in something you know you, the the black samurai y yasuke is from the same time period you know that actually occurred um so, which is interesting that you think that Japan is just nothing is happening, but you have the Portuguese who are one of the main, I guess, antagonists in the film, in the in the series. They're they're going there. They're bringing slaves from um from from Africa. The the, the Dutch are fighting them. So, so it's a wild situation happening over there. But hey, we all liked it. We want to check more of it, right? Yeah. Okay, Cal. I take that as a yes. Of course, I am open. To the show, but you know me. I'm just tired of the whole putting the masculine stuff on the chicks. You know, the dude, for some reason, he's the only good dude is a dumb dude or something of that nature. There's no, they're pushed towards egalitarianism inside of fiction. I think is utterly ridic is utterly ridiculous. The complement the complementarian system works much better. Everybody gets better stuff out of it. They've gone overboard with it. I still see it in the trailer. But that being said. The original is so good. I'm really looking forward to this. I mean, if you're, you know, we're both a history aficionados as well. So seeing this acted out will be fun to watch as well. I just hope I can really get into the story because I'm rewatching the original now and it's just so much fun to watch. So I hope this was as well. Hey, so you guys heard it. PD, Cal, we're there. Spinarak. Out.